I found a videotape in my parents' basement. I now know the disgusting truth of my childhood. Since a kid, I've always had a large scar along my throat. I never knew why until today. My parents always told me I just had a tonsil removal when I was younger, which I never questioned until my curiosity got the better of me. I'm pretty athletic and get good test scores, but I never understood why I get treated so special my whole life by everyone in my town. If anything, I've always felt like there was something a little bit sinister about just how obsequious everyone is in our town is toward me. Sometimes it feels a little mocking, almost menacing. Sometimes the old folks around here smile at me like they know a secret about me that I don't know about myself. It's been this way for as long as I can remember. I've overheard my parents talking a few times about what it was like back when they were broke and pretty much ostracized here in town. Which is weird because we've been really comfortable for as long as I can remember. I had my tonsils out when I was 8, and the surgeon did a bad job that left me with a scar. I've always assumed my parents must have threatened to sue and then settled or something, and that's why neither of them has to work. And we are still pretty rich knowing what I know now I'm writing this. I wish this was true. I've never been able to remember much before I was 8 years old. I think I have a lot of bad memories. I think I used to get bullied in school so I just blocked out a lot of memories from before my life turned awesome. Life is happier when you have a knack for staying positive. My first crystal clear, vivid memory is waking up in the hospital when I was 8 after having had my tonsils out. I remember Geneva Clark, prettiest and most popular girl in 3rd grade, standing there with her parents and handing me a cup of ice cream and smiling shyly at me and they were all telling me how glad they were I was okay. I don't think Geneva had cared much about me before that, which was odd for her to start caring. Suddenly Geneva's smile is burned into my brain. It's the smile. I've always compared all other smiles too, but yesterday everything started to make sense. I was in our basement just kind of poking around, and I found a box full of my dad's old home movies. One of them was labeled ceremony and I figured maybe it was my parents' wedding or something. My parents have always been kind of distant to me. They always do anything I ask too, like there is something scary or uncanny about me, which I realize is unnatural and also bad parenting. I have always been curious about what things were like for them before I came around, so when I saw this tape that I figured was their wedding ceremony, I decided to dust off an old VHS player that still works and pop it in. What I saw has me freaked the out. The film starts rolling in a huge cavernous space that might have been the basement of one of the many mansions in the old section of town. There were big pillars set up on either side of a long crimson colored carpet, and the camera panned the carpet and then settled on a huge marble altar topped by an intricate carving unlike anything I have ever seen in a church. Instead of Christ or a cross, the altar was capped by a huge marble statue of a naked man. On his head was a crown of garlands like a Greek god. The altar was beautiful, but as I watched the tape, I ever so faintly remembered being 8 years old and staring down that long red carpet and seeing the altar and being seized by a sense of inchoate dread and incipient pure panic. I sat and tried to place the memory, whether it was before or after I had my tonsils out, but I just couldn't remember it properly. The camera panned back and landed on me. I was apparently the star of the show. I stood there awkwardly dressed in weird white robes. It reminded me of some half memories that popped up from time to time about being clad in white robes, but I had always dismissed that as something that happened in the hospital. The camera looked me up and down, and what it showed was a confused, fat, blubbering little boy I could hardly recognize as myself. I was standing between two tall men and there were tears running down my cheek and I was heaving great bawling sobs. I was picking my nose frantically, and I suddenly remembered that when I was a little kid I used to pick my nose compulsively when I was nervous. The nose picking was back before I have clear memories. Before I got popular. The tall man on my left was wearing one of those Greek tragic muse masks that was white as snow and the tall man on my right was wearing a blood red comic muse mask. I was looking them up and down. I must have been looking desperately for some hint of tenderness or compassion, but they were just two tall men standing rigid and wearing masks and facing straight ahead. The camera panned back to the altar. Another very tall man walked into frame up to the altar and he was dressed in crimson robes and a shockingly lifelike goat head mask. The man had a long dagger in his hand that looked wicked even by the faint light of the tallow candles burning on the altar. As I sat in a chair and watched the goat-headed man on the crackling VHS tape. Even though I'm now a physically intimidating 18-year-old alpha bro, I realized I had involuntarily begun to suck my thumb and pick up my nose again. Disgusted, I forced myself to grab the sides of the chair I was sitting in and continue watching the tape. The man spoke, lisped really through his mask. This year the Crandall family has been gracious enough to offer their son Julius for the Orphic ritual. May the ritual be a success, and may it bring another year of peace and prosperity to the town and a lifetime of prosperity and popularity to the Crandalls and to their son. Please bring Julius down. The sound quality was horrible, every other syllable was punctuated by crackles and hisses, and I had to rewind the tape several times to make it all out. I felt close to an emotional edge as the tape continued to play. I sat grasping the sides of the chair I was sitting on so hard. My knuckles were turning white and the panic and terror were washing over me in vast and terrible waves. It was all I could do to keep myself together. I wanted to turn the tape off and pretend I had never found it, but I couldn't. I watched myself being LED down the carpet toward the goat-headed man with a knife. I watched as I tried to turn around and run away, but four strong hands held me fast and guided me roughly. I now remember toward the altar. The camera zoomed out again and when it zoomed back in I was standing at the altar, knees knocking, and I was squirming against the two tall men who held me in place while the man with the dagger chanted something. The sound quality on the tape was horrible and I couldn't make out a word of what he was saying. The priest picked up a wooden chalice and turned to face the statue on the altar. 
He held the chalice up toward the statue's lips. Once he had touched the lips with the chalice he turned around and guided the chalice toward my own trembling lips as the two strong men held me fast. I remember now that I was still pants pissing, scared, but that I also wanted craved whatever was in the chalice sitting in my chair, tears running down my cheek. I could now see this scene as clearly as I could see Geneva smile at me in my hospital bed. The chalice touched my lips and the men made me drink and my body went limp. Immediately I crumpled up on the floor and the three men heaved me up onto the altar and lay me spread on the altar beneath the statue. The two men turned to face the congregation. The camera panned the seats for the first time, and I could see a sea of people wearing myriad masks that ranged from the angels to wolves or devils. The camera focused again on the priest who was standing over my body, dagger in hand, chanting again. He bent over and suddenly with a startling violence he lashed the blade of the dagger across my throat and my body heaved and then lay motionless save for the throbbing in my throat as red arterial blood sprayed out and black vascular blood oozed down the pristine altar. Even through the hissing and crackling of the tape's terrible audio, I could hear the congregation gasp in unison and then begin to sing a strange song. My body bled out on the altar and convulsed one last time, and then I saw the same two men who had led me up the carpet come back into frame, this time carrying a child-sized box that I instantly realized was a coffin. The priest in the goat mask chanted another weird blessing over my body. The arterial blood had quit squirting in its great red geyser. Now there was only the gentle, almost soothing trickle of lazy black blood falling down from my throat, falling onto the ground in front of the altar in great globs. The two men closed the lid on the ceremonial casket. It is done, the priest said loudly. Now our sacrificial victim is to be buried and should the gods will it, he shall rise rejuvenated and bring prosperity to us all for another year. The tape went black. I could not bring myself to rewind it. I cannot mention it to my parents or to anyone. I have a strange feeling I wouldn't be safe. I balled my fists up and sobbed in bewilderment and confusion and panic. I ran my hands, as I often do whenever I'm nervous, across the only blemish. I really have, an admittedly very large and jagged scar on my throat. That was when I heard the basement door open, 